Everything in enterprise IT is related to data centers. Cloud is a collection of data centers. Enterprises have their private data centers. AI is trained in data centers. Even edge computing utilizes data centers for ultimate performance and storage capacity. But how do data centers look like? What do they consist of? That is what we'll talk about today. This is the fifth video in our Introduction to Enterprise IT series. If you haven't seen the other ones yet, you will find them from the links down below. This video is a cut down version of the full course module that all our students at Tech Enthusiast Academy have access to and much more. If you are not a student yet, sign up at academy.techenthusiast.com. Now let's talk about data centers. So let's start with the one data center right here. Usually when we are designing a data center, we want to do something that we call a raised floor and a lowered ceiling as well. So this is the raised floor design. And then what we have is we have rows and rows of data center stuff here. We have lots of uh, data center racks, cabinets, full of servers, storage devices, and uh, networking equipment. This much of electronical devices, they consume, first of all, a lot of electricity. But as a byproduct, they also generate a lot of heat. And that's why we need to have something that is trying to cool down the whole environment. This is called crack, which is short for computer room air conditioning. It's just a, basically an air conditioning device. As we know, heat actually goes up and the computer room air conditioning device is then sucking in air from above. And then from the bottom, it is blowing the cool air back to the computers or servers and storage devices and all the IT infrastructure. Another very convenient reason for this lowered ceiling is that we can run cabling here. You can organize the cabling much more nicer in this way. You can also do it through the uh, floor, raised floor here. So this is where we have a lot of space as well to do the cabling there under the floor. Now, if we take a look at the situation from top down, and now let's have uh, four rows of cabinets. These are the roofs of the racks. So looking from top down there. So first of all, what we want to do is what we want to create something called hot and cold aisles. For instance, in this row here, the servers and storage devices would be facing the front that way and the back that way. So the hot air comes out from the back. So if we want this to be a hot aisle, then this row has to be facing the other way. So the front of the servers of this row would be here and the back on this side. So both of these rows are blowing their hot air on one aisle. The hot air comes out from these devices, out, and then the cold air comes out from the cold aisles. So what else do we need but just IT devices? What we first need to power up these, uh, these guys is electricity, obviously. So the first thing that we should be doing is providing some kind of electricity somehow. Most probably we don't want to trust just one power uh, grid uh, service provider. We should probably consider having another provider. This way we can be quite certain already that even if the electricity from power grid one for some reason stops, then we still have the other one there. A diesel generator, totally independent of power grids, so it can start generating electricity immediately when the power is cut from the power grids. 
So now we are in a pretty good shape already, but we still have one ace up in the sleeve. UPS device, just a big battery that has, I don't know, maybe minutes or half an hour or something capacity to power up the most crucial servers and storage devices in case there is a power failure in one of these grids and the diesel generator doesn't have time to kick in. And UPS can also provide consistent clean uh, electricity to all the devices here. Another important part of the data center here is to get access to outside world. So of course we need some kind of an internet connection. And just like with the electricity, we have multiple service providers here. Humidifier. We don't want to have the air too dry. We want to get to somewhere between 40 and 60% of humidity, air humidity there. We don't want to go over that. We don't want like 80% humidity either because then we are risking short circuiting these sensitive, sensitive components. Fire suppression. We don't probably want to use water or any kind of liquid in these environments for obvious reasons. Most of the time what we are using uh, as fire suppression in data centers is some kind of mixture of gases. So that's very, very basic in introduction to data centers right there. Data centers are fascinating places with servers, storage devices, networking, power and cooling, fire suppression and many other technologies working together to make our everyday digital life tick. If you want to learn more about data centers or overall about enterprise IT and earn a course certificate to brag with, sign up at academy.techenthusiast.com and become another happy student of ours. The next video will be about the fundamental concept of cloud. Subscribe and hit that bell button to be the first to know when that one is released. Thanks for watching and until the next one.